Hi guys, this is EZS123. Today we're going to talk about the insulin structure. So how I remember the insulin structure is by the number 9. So first we're going to draw number 9. And then the second thing we're going to do is that we are going to draw two lines here. So the top part and the bottom part, we're going to connect them. Okay? And then two lines are not complete. I think we need a cap on them, right? So let's make a cap right here. Okay, so now what does this represent? These represent sulfide bounds, okay? So once again, the number nine, the top part, one sulfide bond, two sulfide bonds, and then a cap on top okay now since this is on top we'll call this a and since this is on bottom we'll call this b and since this part looks like a c we'll call this part c and we'll divide it so the bond ends here and the bond end here and this looks like a C so A B C so A and B are connected by two sulfide bonds and A is let's say A is very unstable so to hold itself together it needs a sulfide bond on its own to keep its uh, line together so what does this have to do with insulin so this whole structure as a whole is called pro-insulin, okay? Now you might ask, okay, so now we got the pro-insulin, now how do we get insulin? So just like life, when people see a happy family, they want to break it up. Your pancreas is no different. When they see a good happy family of A, B, and C, you want to break it up. So here comes these endopeptidases, okay? These endo peptidases they're cutters right so what they're gonna do is that they're gonna cut this part and another I'll draw here and they're gonna cut this part so what's gonna happen then is they're gonna start eating this up they're gonna break this they're gonna break this and you're gonna have A and B of its own and C on its own so let me draw this further so after these cutter endopeptidases are done cutting, you'll have a C left and an A and B which are connected left. So this A and B structure is called the insulin. So this is where the insulin comes from. And this C structure, this is a C peptide. So this is what they talk about when they talk about C peptides. Now, why is this interesting? This is very interesting because, as you see, they were one structure. So in your body, when you measure insulin, insulin must be proportional to C peptide. So if your insulin is increased, your C peptide must be increased. This is again important because what's going to happen is that if someone comes to you with hypoglycemia and you're thinking they might have insulinoma or some other kind of disease, to differentiate this from people who are just coming to the hospital pretending to be sick, trying to get attention, you check their C-peptide level along with insulin. So if their insulin is high and their C-peptide is high, that means it's a genuine problem. Their insulin secretion is really high. But if their insulin is high and the C-peptide is low, that means they're trying to fool you. But you're not a fool because you just watched this video. You, you know you're, what you're talking about. So you're going to tell that person, listen, man, I'm not stupid. You injected yourself with insulin because that just shows me that this was not insulin secreted by your pancreas, but you took it from outside. Or they might not be trying to fool you. They just might be a diabetic patient that took too much insulin. And uh, so this is how you differentiate these uh, 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 normal insulin secretion or hyperinsulin secretion that your body is doing 
from uh, people who are taking insulin from exogenous sources. So that's it guys, this is it. You have the insulin structure. In the future lectures, I'll talk about how insulin is secreted and uh, how it affects different tissues and uh, all that good stuff.